application of IQ, OQ and PQ to computerised systems began about 30 something years ago when basically the industry really didn't have a good approach towards validating computerised systems. So the industry was looking around for frameworks that might work and they, th they saw process validation and, and its stages of DQ, IQ, OQ, PQ, et cetera, and said, ah, well, if it works for process validation, let's try it for computerized systems. And those terms were applied, but more or less, I think, equivalently uh, to computerized system validation. So 30 years ago, 25 years ago, that would be the kind of common emerging industry way of, of getting to a validated computerized system would be to, to follow these steps. And, and to, to the extent that you do want to install things properly, you want them to functionally work and you want them to have the right performance, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, apart from one quite big thing that it is inherently a linear process. The software development is not linear for decades. So th there's that inherent linearness. But another problem has been that it, it hasn't been so much about the activities, it's been about generating paper. So, you know, it's about generating a paper IQ, a paper OQ, and a paper PQ with lots and lots of signatures. So, the point we have so if 10 people have approved that piece of paper, and that piece of paper, and that piece of paper, then that system must work, regardless of whether it actually did work. Uh, and don't get me wrong, IQ, OQ, PQ can work fine under some circumstances. For instance, if you have a reasonably standard piece of manufacturing equipment and you want to introduce it, uh, you know what you want. You might have 20 of them already. So you've got requirements, you buy what you want, you install it, you check, you install it, you, you check that's operationally and performance wise. You know, that kind of linear approach is good for that kind of life cycle. Same for laboratory instruments where you buy one, you install it, check it's working. It is singularly ineffective for large scale software development and it's not effective for uh, the majority of, of medium to large IT systems where the life cycle does not conform to IQ, OQ, BQ, and neither does it naturally check out those deliverables because um, well, even, you know, look at, looking at it more traditionally, if you had module testing, integration testing, um, acceptance testing and then somebody would still come well yes but we want to see your OQ and your PQ so you had uh, really strange situations where where I say um, performance uh, um, acceptance testing was performed and then there was another document called OQ which was added as a kind of layer to say that this happened and the same for final user acceptance where there was another document where 10 people had to sign to prove that that testing had actually happened. So, in, in some cases, having uh, a life cycle defined as IQ, OQ, PQ makes sense, but in the vast majority that involves software development or configuration of software packages, it's not the most appropriate life cycle, and there's no reason why you should have an IQ OQ PQ. And this is this is a decision that the FDA, interestingly enough, took in 1997 when they were writing a guidance on the general principles of software validation. They said, we're not telling you how to manage your life cycle, that's up to you. And we know that sometimes people use IQ OQ PQ. In our guidance, we're not going to use those terms not because there's anything wrong with them, but one reason is the software industry doesn't understand them. They're meaningless to suppliers in the software industry. So we're going to stick to what the rest of the world is using and not try to force fit into a set of terms that uh, may sometimes fit and may don't. So you know, 97, that's a long time ago, FDA made that decision that, and uh, it's certainly not mandatory to use those terms.